I'm going to use my 30 seconds to remember our weekly tennis sessions. From October to May, we would book a court at the tennis bubble at MIT, almost every year for around 10 years. We would spend a big chunk of our tennis time talking, not playing. We made very little progress in tennis. But Emmanuel became my best friend on this side of the Atlantic. I will never forget the pure genius, the unbounded kindness, the Renaissance man. All those qualities were obvious, even on a tennis court. I met Emmanuel 15 years ago or so at BU after a seminar. A few years after that, we started playing tennis regularly, once a week, every week, from October 1st to May 1st at the MIT tennis bubble. And that's how we became friends. In this short video, let me tell you a bit more about um, this pure genius, this unbounded kindness and the Renaissance man. The pure genius is the part that everyone in the profession saw, right? You can all look at his list of papers. It's kind of jaw dropping. Even with 10 lives, I couldn't produce the same amount or, or quality of research. But there was a side to this incredible production that perhaps fewer people saw. So yes, his brain turned fast, really, really fast. But he also worked hard, really hard. Everything had to be perfect. The perfect presentation, the perfect discussion you saw were actually fought through. Uh, scripted, polished, rehearsed, and, and polished again. So he had the perfect brain and not an ounce of laziness. He was always working, actually, even when we were playing tennis. A long time ago, more than 10 years ago, he told me about an idea while we were resting on the side of the tennis court. I joked that uh, he would have a paper written before our next tennis game, tennis game and uh, of course he did, right? But there are so many small people in our profession, um, that's for sure. But kindness seems often in short supply. Emmanuel was a pure genius with an unbounded kindness. Since he passed away, I thought about our conversations a lot. I can't remember him saying anything bad about anyone ever, not a single time in more than 10 years. Even when we were both leading off as team on the court, even after long dinners at home, even after a few glasses of wine, he never said a bad word about anyone. We talked about life, about love, about colleagues, about professional successes and frustrations too. And as I vented my spleen about the work, he gently mocked me for being ungenerous. I hope that actually his example made me a, a better person. We never played a match, I talked about tennis. Um, I think we never competed because he was not there to win. Instead, actually, he worked on beautifully executing forehands and backhands, actually, especially backhands. Beautiful backhands reminded him of uh, beautiful ideas. And he loved beautiful ideas on many, many different topics. He was a Renaissance man, always trying to expand his knowledge. He and Nicole came to our house to watch the 2016 election results. He kept asking my wife, the only American in the room, uh, why, why Trump was winning. She had no answers. Um, after that, he decided to read about political science. And within a few months, he had devoured all the classics that science both taught. But this is just a single example. He was insatiable curious. He was just as likely to read uh, frontier research in, in physics or, or biology. I, I could never keep up. But that didn't matter because he actually loved to share what he learned. Not because he wanted people to know that he, he had read something, but because he loved the discussions, the debates, and the intellectual engagement. My wife, who's an anthropologist, was always floored by how much he knew about things way outside his field. Emmanuel was such an important part of my life on this side of the Atlantic. He played with our children. Um, he was wondering when they were two or three, why they seemed to prefer cooperative board games with no strategy to chess or checkers. He found that so, say, confusing, but it was cool. We celebrated Jewish holidays together. We held seriously shortened setters so that neither the kids or, or I lost our minds. And just last winter, right before COVID struck, he and Mikol introduced us to the soup Egyptienne that he thought of as part of his heritage and culinary happiness. These memories make me smile. 
in July, I lost my best friend in this country. I miss him. I'm not sure I spent one day without thinking about him. I actually dream of being back on the tennis court with him. 